All right, all right. So what's going on, everybody? How's it going out there? You know, welcome to another segment. And this is House of I-10. Um, you know, here where we just talk about issues going on in the community. We talk about Black history, um, just all types of different topics from, from the, the Black perspective, I, I will say. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we're going to get into just a little bit of what was on my mind today. Um, you know, as I woke up, had my day started and, you know, just sitting up here thinking uh, on this, what's today, beautiful Thursday. And it's a lot going on in our community across the nation, not just here, um, here in Florida, but just period. And I think we really need to have some conversations about what, what inspires you? Like, how do you dictate and determine every day how you're going to live your life, what you're going to do, um, what you're going to make happen, just just all of that. So we're going to get into that real quick. Let me just get one minute to step away. So what what inspires you? Like, how do you determine as, as a person, like, how should I live? What should I spend my time doing? How do I develop my passion? Am I actively like living or am I just existing? And then once I choose that, what does it look like on my day to day for me to determine like, here's where I want to go and here's where I am. And so what steps in between that do I need to, and what actions do I need to take in the day to day to get me to that next level, to get me to who I feel like is the way that I want my life, my existence to represent itself. And when I take my last breath and I, my life flashes before my eyes, will I smile and be fulfilled or will I, will I be regretful and have a lot of just parts about me is just like, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have done that. Cause you only get one chance at this. You only get one go. You only you know, there's no reset button, as they always say. I used to hear that growing up all the time. And you mainly hear from a lot of older people. And I believe that was wisdom. But when you have youth inside, sometimes you may not really swallow and ingest and digest those types of ideas. And so I can't speak for nobody else. I can only talk to you about my trajectory and where I am. And as you see this, this bookshelf back behind me with this list of books and I'm trying to grow it because I want one of those big libraries um, with all types of books from all types of different authors backgrounds. I'm not really good at the fictional. Um, I really try to read stuff on African American history. I really try to read stuff on government politics. So, and everybody has to have their passion, but I really want a bookshelf, but I want those books to translate to my mindset. I want these books to the content to really be embedded in my mindset and for me to do, just be able to articulate that. I, I'm reading books on leadership. I'm reading books on history, but I don't just want to read them to say that I read them. I want to read them so that I can get that content to build myself into a better character, like build myself into a better human, somebody who's a contributor to my community, somebody that's a contributor to my family. Um, and I believe that you must do that by peeling back the pages of books. You can use YouTube at this point and, you know, talking to those people who are wiser, but I believe your life has to be lived in an effort to positively impact the community that surrounds you. And so the best way that I think that we get to that is by, bettering ourselves, reading, eating good, learning about different diets, nutrition, all of that. And I, I don't know if in our community today, people are really taking that type of approach to the life in which they, which they have. Um, you know, there's a lot of distractions, there's things going on. We all feel like we have time constraints. And sometimes I don't think we just stop and sit still a, for a long time, you know, for a period of time. And I, I'm trying to influence to let people know how we can kind of cut these things and they don't have to be continu contiguous. So if we um, put myself on the timer because I don't want to go on a rant for too long, but if we 
take that time to dedicate 15 minutes towards learning something new. If we take that time, if we say we want to do an hour a day and we want to try to get this book done or we want to try to uh, get this certification, we can get out of just doing one continuous hour, right? If that doesn't work for our schedules or if we're trying to build discipline in order to be able to sit there and do that. We can break these things up into time intervals that best work for our particular individual situations. And so what we have right now is we have the zero or a hundred. We got the all or nothing and there's no in between. And so my goal is to get people to stop doing 0% and stop feeling like you have to do 100% if you trying to acquire that 100% is going to cause you to just do nothing at all, right? I'd rather see you do 20% or 40% than to just do nothing. And so I believe that the way you do that, you have to get certain tools or be exposed to certain tools to help you accomplish that and to help you fulfill whatever it is that your goals are. And so when we're reading these books, we have to read books on leadership. We cannot occupy leadership positions and then maybe have not tried to take any certifications um, or have not digested several leadership books. I'm talking about with the highlighter, I'm talking about with tabs inside of that book, um, taking different uh, methods of leadership and then trying to implement that throughout the various situations in which you go through, you don't become a great leader through osmosis. So the best way for you to lead the people in which you're going to be over is you have to take some time to ingest the proper leadership methodology that has been crafted by those who came before us and are much more equipped to occupy the spaces of leadership. And so I think if you're not willing to do the work, then you become a disservice because as they say, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. You can be trying your best and feel like you're the most qualified because you know you're passionate about it, but your experiences are it's only going to get you so far, right? And so your experience, experiences matter. Your experiences are important, but you have to bolster that experience with qualified information. And so when you add on to that, you, you add on to the dynamic of implementing effective leadership. And on top of that, if you're truly a leader, you should be preparing for the generations to come after you. You should be succession planning from the day you get into that particular seat. And you can't teach what you don't know. So if I want to be the best leader, I'm going to measure my leadership with time, after time has passed, after there has been another person that has come into the seat, I'm going to measure my leadership and my legacy based off of how they do. And th there was a, a saying, I don't know if I'm gonna get it exact correct, but I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase, par paraphrase. And it states that the true leader or the wise man will plant seeds and never have a chance to possibly sit in their shade. And so that just talks about, like I said, and I paraphrase, so I didn't get it quite right, but the idea of it is selfless. It's selfless. Well, so, and mind you, the whole crux of this conversation is talking about how you lead and how you live an active life instead of just existing. And that takes intentionality. You have to be deliberate about the way you engage your day. So I think about, you know, you get people to say, hey, have a great day hey, uh, hope, hope you have a wonderful weekend, all of that. And it's, it's kind of like a, a faith-based thing, right? But that, and that's fine for other people who may be telling you that. But sometimes, because I know so many people will tell you to have a great day, I want to be the one to tell you to make it a great day. 
I believe that inserts a, a whole different uh, approach, you know, to, to your life. I want to tell you to, you understand that you are the author of your story. You understand, as the great Invictus poem says in closing, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And so if you are indeed that, then that's going to take a little bit of intentionality and a little bit of planning for you to indeed embody exactly what that says. And I think once you do that and every time you close out your day and you're able to reflect before you go to bed, you can actually feel a lot better about how your day went because there were things, of course, that you, you got done. And of course, there's things that you're not going to get done, but you have gotten a little bit closer. And so now, you know, I could wake up the next day. Today's Thursday. I could wake up on Friday, start at the top of my day and continue to pick up where I left off. But mind you, all of this were things that I wrote down that I said I wanted to get done. So I dictated and determined what it was that I was going to do. And life didn't just keep happening to me, but I was able to instruct how some things were going to go. Now, what do they say about life happening to you, right? It's some things that are in your control and some things that are out of your control. And what we need to do is to be able to clearly define and determine what's in my control, what's not in my control, what's out of my control. And Life is 20% of what happens to you, but 80% of how you react to it. Life is 20% of what happens to you and 80% of how you react to it. There are some things that are going to occur and it's going to be out of your control, but your goal is to adapt to the situation, adapt to the new environment that you have been exposed to. And it doesn't mean that you always have to get those things right in your response. But I can assure you, if you're opening up more books, if you're talking to people, just trying to understand what their life path was, was once they tell you those things, you that stuff is going to stick in the back of your mind. And you may not use it for a week, two months, six months, a year. But I can assure you that once you come into a particular situation, if you, something is going to trigger that thought or that conversation or that, that text that was in a book, and you're going to be in a better position to adapt to that situation and respond. And I think that that's what better prepares us on this journey of, of being a human, of our spirit, occupying a, a human life form, that's what help us to better navigate and to jump over the hurdles and the obstacles that we're going to be presented with. Because here's another thing that I remember reading. You're always going to have problems. Problems are always going to exist. But what you want is to be able to have a different dynamics with the problems of which you experience. So you're always going to have money problems, right? But are you going to have money problems because you don't know where the money is going to come for the to put the next meal on your table or to keep on your lights or to uh, put gas in your car to be able to adapt to this inflation that we're experiencing right now? Are you going to have those those type of money problems or are you going to have money problems that I don't know where to take this extra income and invest it in? Do I want to put it into a tech stock? Do I want to put it into crypto? Do I want to a give to this organization or that organization or give a scholarship for this or you know th there's always going to be money problems but I want to get people to the point of where those money problems are not coming from life and death you know I want those money problems to start coming from a place of where I know that I'm financially solvent and I'm just trying to figure out what to do with the excess. I'm trying to figure out how much how much money to leave to my oldest child or to my youngest child, you know, to your favorite and maybe you're not favorite. I'm not going to get into that. But y'all know y'all got favorites <laughs> with your children or with people or whatever. But I think you come from a space and it's less anxious when you're able to dictate what, your, what the quality of your problems are. And so, you know, sometimes in our communities, we, we really suffer from 
the problems that I talked about in the former. And, and that's just really satisfying your everyday needs, unfortunately. And, but that comes with the type of education that you get. And I'm not talking about degrees. I'm not talking about uh, summa cum laude, magna cum laude. I'm not talking about none of that. Carter G. Woodson talked about education and he said it comes in two forms. He said the education that you get within the walls of academia and the education that you give yourself within the walls of your own home. And he argued that the latter is more important than the former. All this comes down to is intentionality and in taking that time to sit and be still and having at the forefront of your life that I want to get better. I want to be the best person that I can with the time that I have, the limited time that I have here on this earth. I want to take this experience and I want to, I want to do everything that I can within my power to have this to be one of the most fulfilling experiences with that time that I have here. And, and that takes a little bit of being deliberate. That takes of writing out what your pathway is going to be. And and so um, that comes from the research that comes from talking and you have to find people who are looking to do the same thing. And so I will um, go ahead and touch on uh, if you don't have that community, right, of people who may be trying to attack their life at the, at the way with the same approach that you are. There's plenty of resources online. There, there's um, plenty of resources, plenty of videos on YouTube, and you can Google other videos and find those people who have been doing that, who's looking to do that, and allow them to then inspire you. See, we kind of have it messed up about how we think that we're going to get to the actions, the actions in which we need in order for us to live and do what we want. We want a way for inspiration to just come out and to just fall into our lap. And then once that inspiration comes to fall into my lap, then that will motivate me then to do the actions in which I'm supposed to do. And that is why a lot of us get paralyzed. We fall into a state of nothingness, right? And then so procrastination. So then we look two days up and we're like, oh man, I was supposed to do this on Thursday. And so what I have come to find out, um, and this was also through reading, shout out uh, Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Uh, in that book, he took a formula and he exposed me to something that turns that on his head and it has a different uh, intricacy and a different correlation where he states that action leads to inspiration and it leads to motivation or action leads to motivation and leads to inspiration, one of those two. But the point is that it takes the action first. So even with me shooting this video right now, I, I said here, I wasn't necessarily inspired to shoot it, but I also know that this has been something I've been thinking about all week. So I just said, let me get the mic out. Let me set up the camera and let me just go and just talk about this thing that I've been thinking about. And so it took that action. And then as I started talking, I just started getting more and more inspired to just carry out this conversation that I've been having with you all today. And I also know that they are people like me who may not have somebody in their circle that is able to deliver this message. And so then I become inspired and I become motivated to give that to somebody who may just be clicking around, browsing around, just like action or talking about what is life about, you know, whatever. Hopefully they click on it and then they see this and they're like, yes, this is exactly what I've been trying to figure out. I've been trying to find more people who are interested in that. I live in this particular community and my neighbors or the people that's in my circle, every time I bring this up, they're like, oh, I don't feel like talking about this or it's every, all the information is falling on deaf ears. And so um, you, you have to go out and find your community, right? And your community may not be physically in person. I think we learned that all through COVID, through the pandemic over the past couple of years, but Virtual. Virtual is an option. The virtual is a formidable option. You have people out here who have emails. I'm on the Zoom platform right now. So I can, um, you know, hop on here and then we can dialogue. You, you, It's just important for you to find that support because the thing is, we have a lot of communities that are finding support systems 
And those support systems may not be the best. They may not be the most advantageous um, for positive influence. You know, everybody out here is inspired by something or someone. And you become the sum of the people that you spend the majority of your time with. And so I also see in our community, I think that there are a lot of people who are influenced and inspired by our lower selves, our lower vibrations, instead of our higher selves, our more divine selves, right? We're more in touch with our evils, um, I would kind of want to say, instead of our divinity. And so because you are inspired by that, if there are more of those images coming through the TV, if you do audio, if you get in those types of words, those types of narratives, that then impacts your subconscious within impacts who you begin to identify with and who you are. Even if you try to dissociate yourself with that, you're still only going to rise to the level of the amount of information that you take in constantly. There's no getting around that. You can't have a, a dichotomy or a discourse with yourself if you say, I wanna be this amazing figure, I wanna be about action, I wanna go out and inspire the world, I wanna be a positive impact, but you spend the majority of your time taking in negative images, or you spend your time listening, having lower level, lower vibration conversations, which means you're talking about people instead of talking about ideas, or that the music in which you're listening to is just full of not community building, but community division. And then on top of that, you don't spend a significant enough amount of time trying to take in any information that combats that. That's never going to align and work in harmony to propel you to higher levels. It just, it, it doesn't work like that. And I know, unfortunately, I think a lot of us, we want it to be the opposite. We, we want to believe that we, as people, we're above some of the things that we take in. And even if you don't go to the extremities of what you're hearing, it still causes you to lower yourself in some, faith form, some shape, form, or fashion than where you would actually like to be. And so I, I don't, I don't want to tell you to do away with it, right? But I need you to increase the levels of positive images and the levels of higher, uh, higher vibration conversations that you're having. That's what I need you to do. I need, if something negative is up here, I need you to first, at least get it on par. Let's get similar levels. So if I engaged in two hours of watching nonsense, right, then it means I also engaged two hours in watching something that was going to uh, significantly impact me and help me develop into a, a better person. And then if I'm listening to certain types of music, then you're going to have to bring that up. So you're going to have to start listening to jazz, something that calms the spirit. Or if you listen to hip hop, conscious hip hop, um, you know, Everybody's excited about Kendrick Lamar, uh, Mr. Morales and the Big Stepper, I think is the name of the album that's coming up, you know, and he really hit us with the heart part five uh, that he just released on YouTube with the video, um, as well as with the lyrics. So, you know, you need to bring more of those people in. You may have to go back to some old school hip hop artists, uh, Poor Righteous Teachers, uh, listen, you know, listening to some of that. So, uh, Clint, what was the X Clan? That's another one that I got exposed to. Um, and just kind of hear about some of the narratives they talk about. And then importantly, you got to go out into the community and you got to give some of your time and give some of yourself to some things that's positive. There's always opportunities to go out into your community, do something. I mean, it's just something as small as picking up trash throughout the street. Or if you go and you talk to the kids up the block and you just, you don't engage and go there and try to preach at them. Here's one of the things that I think a lot of us make huge mistakes at. We go down there and I think you have great intentions, but you go out there and then you just want to start preaching at the kids. Yo, y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that. Your approach immediately is going to turn them off and they're not going to listen to you. Sometimes you just got to go there and 
you know, I ain't just talking about random kids maybe sometimes, but you can start off with your family. Sometimes you just got to go there and sit. Sometimes you need to do more asking questions than you are trying to offer unsolicited advice. And it's, it's it comes down to understanding. And, you know, there can be a time and place where there is for corrective action, but every time I see you shouldn't be about corrective action. Some of us, we have to stop taking our ourselves so seriously. There was another great quote that I heard, heard that said um, something along the lines of, don't take life too seriously. It's not like any of us make it out alive anyway. And so, you know, if you kind of loosen up a little bit, it's not telling you to lower your standards, but it may be telling you to uh, adapt to the situation and maybe change your approach. What you have to say is not insignificant. What you have to say can just be the gospel, right? But if your approach is wrong, then the message doesn't get heard, right? Sometimes it's not the message, it's the messenger. And I think that that's another wisdom that we all have to experience and recognize too so this was on my heart you know this is something that i've been dealing with something i've been battling i wake up every day and i'll tell you right now i fall off the horse but the important thing is that i get back on um kaba hiawatha kamene sorry if i you know said his name wrong he said something along the lines of that we are all born with the judas and we're born with the messiah the judas falls down nine times the messiah rises 10 so that's just to say like you're going to fall off the horse sometimes you're not going to get it right every single day and nobody's asking you for a perfection but it's nothing wrong with trying to achieve perfection because hopefully in the achievement of your perfections you will land on excellence And that's what I think that we need to understand. And that's the ambitions and the aspirations that I think we need to have for our life. So as, as I conclude this, and if you want some action items, start to live your life full of intentionality. Start to kind of measure the time that you spend around negative images or hearing, uh, having negative conversations, having lower level conversations, what I would like to call, um, and see how much you are going and you're trying to actually build your craft. See how much you're trying to actually become the master of your fate and the captain of your soul. Um, and then inspire one other person to do that. Maybe it's your significant other. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's your peers. Maybe you're in an organization and you want to find that one other person or organization who you knows has the ambitions to want to do more and want to do better. Mind you, if we look in our history, it's always been a few great men and women that have inspired the masses to change. And so you don't need 10, 15, 20 people. Sometimes all you need is four. And that's just to start off with. And then if you all have consistency over time, and other people start to see it, you're going to find one other person comes on. Then you're going to find another person comes on. You're going to find somebody that's not going to join you, but you're going to find out that they're doing something way across the way in alignment with what you were doing. And I'm, people are just weird like that sometimes. But hey, all that matters, mind you, is your goal of trying to inspire people to live more fulfilling lives and to be more positive reflections of themselves. So that's what I'll leave you with. That's what I love you with. I say peace to everybody out here. Um, you know, keep on living your life. Understand that you don't get any redos. Understand that you can't start all over again. But every day is an opportunity to become a better version of yourself. So peace. House of our 10. Appreciate y'all spending time with us.